Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I help you design smarter. Today I've got some footage for you of me compositing a graphic using one of my products from start to finish. This is a graphic that I did as a concept for David Bowie. Really fun graphic. I didn't originally record any dialogue for this, so what you'll be seeing is a sped up version of the footage with intermittent voiceovers for parts that I think are important and that I need to explain. But before I get into that, make sure you like and subscribe if you find this kind of content valuable. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. So let's get started. Okay, so here I'm just dragging my image of David Bowie into the Vintone template. And as you can see, I just drop it right into the composite group, which automatically puts the live dither effect on the image. Of course, you can use whichever dither pattern you want. For this one, I'm using the diffusion pattern, but you could choose halftone or whatnot. Right now, I'm just cleaning it up, removing any watermarks and logos. I'm also going to duplicate the layer and use a shadows slash highlights adjustment on it, just to get some more detail in there um, and bring some more brightness into the shadows. So I just layer mask in the parts of that duplicate layer where I want that extra detail. For example, I do it on the hair right here. Okay, I just dragged the logo in there. I'm going to put it behind our subject, David Bowie, to create some depth in the design. And I'm also gonna to begin to style it using layer effects. So you'll see me try some stroke options and a, a gradient look. I'm just pretty much experimenting with different layer styles. And maybe I have some preset patterns that I wanna try out. So yeah, I, I kind of stuck with this gradient look. I really liked it. And later on, I took it a step up by adding some color in there. Now I'm making a circle to place behind the subject and the logo to fill out more of the composition. Obviously we don't want just a flat circle. So once I make the circle, I'm going to add a stroke to it and I'm gonna knock out the inner fill of it just by putting the fill of it to zero and by adding a stroke in the layer styles. And I'd also try out some layer effects on this stroked, the stroke circle sort of to match the logo. And I'm just gonna leave the inner part of the circle empty for now. So I can just figure out the composition and then later on I'll come in and throw an image or some other element inside of there. Okay, now I've dragged some miscellaneous concert lights image uh, into here and I'm going to use that to fill out the background. I wanna keep it in the circle, so I put it in a group and then I layer mask that group to the circle and I pretty much just grab that selection by going into the circle and command clicking on the thumbnail and that's gonna grab the selection of that layer. Then I'm really just playing around with, the, with adjustments on this image to get the contrast and all. Uh, just right and have it you know fitting the different weights of the design i don't want it too strong in the background i don't want it you know i don't want your eyes focused more on the background than the actual subject david bowie here so i'm going to play around with the brightness and darkness and find a spot that works
Okay, so you've seen uh, I added text to the composition to fill it out and sort of contextualize the graphic. And I've just been experimenting with different fonts and layer styles here to get it just right. So I tried a few fonts and this, this part is always tough because there's always more than, it's either no fonts or a couple fonts that you like. And you just have to trust your vision and be confident in your choice. I ended up picking this font called Dunbar Tall, and then I added some warp effects to it just to give it some more life and some more interesting dynamics. And then I added a similar gradient and stroke layer style to it that I did on the logo just to make the whole design more cohesive. All right, and around here, I'm just slapping some textures on this bad boy. Gives it some more life, gives it a vintage feel. These are my worn plastic salt textures. These are available on my website, but I also include some samples within the Ventone file itself. Okay, and now I begin coloring. And I wanna start on Bowie, so I grab a selection of him before I open up that color group. And I'm just gonna put the color pro layer in a group, and I'm gonna mask that group. And this way, whatever I color in here can't go outside the lines of our subject, David Bowie. So you see, I just use a soft brush to color block this out and add some tasteful fading in there. And of course, you'll notice that wherever I color, even if it looks like I'm painting outside the lines, it of course won't actually go outside the lines because of that layer mask. Okay, now I'm going to add a secondary color in here. So I'll open up a different color group and I'll change the color by going into the embedded layer style. So I'll go into the color overlay and change that to a reddish pinkish. And I'll just start painting in details like his lips and the lightning bolt into the layer mask in that color group. Or of course it says paint and mask, that's where I'm painting. So I'm painting in these lips here and I'll probably go back in later and get those teeth to be white. I actually don't know if I did that, but if if you're making a graphic, you probably wanna do that make the teeth and whites of the eyes white. Yeah, see, I'm doing that right here. Okay, here I'm doing sort of a pro trick, which of course, as the, as the creator of this template, I've got some tricks to share for you. So here's one that I use quite often is, I'm going to use one of these secondary colors. So for this example, it's, it's the pinkish red that I chose earlier. And I'm going to paint over our, for one of our first or primary colors, I'm gonna paint over it with that secondary color on a very low opacity. And that's just going to give it some color depth. And as you can see, it's gonna make a more realistic realistic effect, especially on skin. And so I'm painting in, in, in this red in those darker areas of the skin. And that kind of simulates how, you know, tones actually work. And of course, we're trying to adapt this to screen print and, and whatnot. So we can't use as many colors, but I'm going into the, the darker areas here and just adding some more color depth, making it look more realistic.
All right, and now I'm going on to our third color here. I am just painting in an orange for his hair. And of course, I'm going to layer mask this one to the subject as well so that it doesn't go out of the lines of his hair. And you'll also notice that I'm naming all of my color layers so that they don't get lost. And if I want to layer some up later, then I have the ability to do that. And I have to turn each one on and off to see which one's which. So I know as graphic designers don't love to name our layers, but uh, for this template, it's kind of a, a necessity. So definitely keep that in mind when you're working within Vintone. Okay, it gets a little interesting here as I try to find the right color combination for this logo. I had a little trouble on it, but it's pretty much the same process on this. I'm opening up the different color groups and painting in the colors where I want them using a soft brush. And notice how I'm using layer masks to help me color within the lines. So of course I've layer masked out some of the, the color fill layers so that it only affects the logo. And yeah, I'm just experimenting with different kinds of gradients here, maybe trying out a, a color gradient. So I'm um, going from like red to orange or something I thought would be cool. So yeah, you'll just see me experiment with that here. All right, now I'm color blocking the rest of the design, trying to get some sort of interesting results by fading the blue out in some areas. Notice again how I'm using layer mask here to my advantage so that I you know, color within the lines. Um, so yeah, just trying to find a cool color combination for this design. And also don't want to take too much focus away from our subject here. So I don't want the background to be you know, too heavy in terms of color and, and value. So you'll see me just play around with that here. Here you'll see me go in and just adjust some brightness levels within the composition and mess around with the colors a little more. Simple stuff, I'm just figuring out what level of color and tonal contrast works best for this design. That's definitely something you always want to do at the end of your design is experiment with different brightness levels and different colors just to see if there's any maybe better options that you could have opted for and just get some nice post-processing effects on, on your design. just continuing to mess with the colors here colors play a huge role in where your eyes are directed to in a design so it's definitely something you don't want to skimp out on I probably spend most of the time actually finding the colors for this design and making sure I got that down besides for of course you know the rest of the composition but the colors really bring it all together and that's what you want to focus on and make sure you get right After playing with the colors a bit, this is what I ended up on. You'll notice the major difference here is that the black was changed 
to a darker brown color. I did that at the end after I color separated the design. I actually didn't record that part, unfortunately, but super simple process there. If you watched my other videos, you should know all you got to do is merge everything and then use the magic wand tool to select out and put all the colors on separate layers. And since everything is dithered with no transparency, this works flawlessly. Here I'm just slapping it on my LA apparel mock-up to see the beautiful finished product. And that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you learned something in this video. And um, let me know if you'd like some more in this style. As I was doing the voiceover for this, I realized that that's kind of the best way that I can make these kind of full design walkthrough videos. Because when I'm designing, not only do I not want to be talking, having to explain everything that I do in the moment kind of takes away from my creative process. So I really like this kind of style of video. And if you do too, let me know in the comments. And that'll be something that I continue uh, with these full length walkthroughs with the voiceover. Besides that, Vintone is the professional's choice for composite vintage style graphics you can pick that up over on my shop that is durantsupply.com and i'll see you there thanks for watching peace